All right, it is time to swap out the injectors. Um, I originally kept the PD-130, the ASZ uh, injectors in just to see how they would work. And my fuel mileage actually went down by probably 100 kilometers, maybe even up to 150 kilometers per tank. So that's pretty significant. Um, and I'm getting a fuel smell inside the car just from the richness of it. So I have uh, put new seals and gaskets and um, the, the brass fittings on the PD-105, the BLS injectors. So I've rebuilt those or reconditioned them, whatever you'd want to call that. And so now I am uh, going to swap them out. So first, you have to take off the uh, valve cover, which is the five bolts across the front here. You have two on each side. And then you have one in the corner here. Not in the corner. It's almost like in the middle here. Then you have another one that's, that's in the middle here. I think it's right here. And then you have another one here, right on the edge. So you have one, two, three, four in the back, two on each side, and five across the front. You also have to remove the timing belt cover, which is two clips on either side of the, either side of the, the cover. And then to remove the cover, you need to pull the intercooler tube loose. So basically you just pull this clip out until it stops. So you can see here it's not engaged anymore. And then you just slide that thing out of the way and then you can slide your, your cover out. Now you do have to go ahead and get all your inject, your uh, valve cover bolts loose so that your, your fuel rail can, can get out of the way too, because that piece is gonna come out. So now, it's uh, now we just need to, and you also have to disconnect your your breather vent here, and then this vacuum tube. So I've got my vacuum tube dis disconnected. There's the end of that. I've got my my vent tube disconnected. There's that end. So you just swivel that out of the way, and now it should just come right out. So there's the pic, uh, little shot of the back so you can see the bolts here. Now I replaced these two bolts with 10 millimeter bolts. Um, one, because I had two bolts break on me the last time, these were the bolts from the uh, ASZ valve cover. But I found that the 10 millimeters are easier to locate than trying to get a T30 Torx in, in the back here. So these two are easily, you can, um, you can see them, you can feel them. So it makes it a lot easier to get those two out. These two are a little bit more difficult. It's very difficult to see them without ex the, the perfect angle. And um, so I just swapped those two out with 10 millimeters and now they just makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to get out. So now we have to remove um, remove the injectors. So first you have to remove the, the rocker arms. So you loosen the two center bolts first and then the outer bolts. Now what I do just because I feel like it's better is I just barely loosen these two. I barely loosen the outer two and then I come back and completely loosen these two and then completely loosen the outer ones and it just slowly backs it out because I don't want this thing to warp I'm not sure it would really matter because it's not spinning as long as it's torqued down correctly but I just like to I don't like to just completely untorque the bolts one at a time I'd rather like get them a little bit untorqued where they still have pressure on them and then remove them and then once we're, 
once we uh, reassemble, we're going to have to adjust the the nuts and um, lash adjusters here. So uh, we'll do that when we're ready to reassemble. Okay, so to begin to get the uh, rocker arms off and the injectors out, you're going to need these two tools: the spline tool, multi-point. You have a six millimeter and a 10 millimeter. The 10 millimeter takes off the rocker arms. The six millimeter takes off the hold down clamps for the injectors. So these uh, 10 millimeter bolts, what I did is, um, it's probably about a quarter of a turn each bolt. And then I go back and do, then I go back and completely loosen them. So that way, releases the pressure a little bit more evenly um, and uh, they will have pressure on them just because you're you're pressing on the uh, the injectors which are spring-loaded so they will have a little pressure on them still even once they're completely loose but you should be able to tell that just by how the bolt loosens even though it has pressure on it I think you can probably like finger tighten finger loosen it so that's how far the bolts will unscrew themselves before they're actually fully loose. So that's a, it's a pretty long, uh, long shank there. So um, now it, I'm ready to just pull those, lift those off. And so you wanna keep those in order. And I just call this cylinder one. I'm not sure if that's really how it's, uh, you know, referred to in a manual, but Cylinder number one, cylinder number four. So I'm gonna lift this off, put it in my tray, lift that off, put it in my tray, and I'm gonna keep every part on the same cylinder as I disassemble it and reassemble it, just, just in case. I don't know if it matters. I think the clamp downs are all the same, and these um, rocker arms may be the same. I don't know but it's better just to put them back where they went and then you know you're not gonna run into any problems in the future. All right, so now that I have those removed, you wanna take off the, the plugs here. So you just wanna grab a hold of the plastic tab there with a pair of pliers and just a little snug, they're a little snug, but they just pull straight up. So you do that with, with all of them. Make sure you get a good grip on that tab. You can use needle nose pliers for this too. Just a little pull up and they uncliff. So now we're gonna loosen up the, uh, the six millimeter bolts there. Okay, so now these, once these are loose, you, so you can see there the bolts are, everything's loose and you're gonna, they, they fit into a groove, so you're gonna have to wiggle them out. <laughs> it's kinda hard to do it with one hand here. So you can see how it's got this little foot on there. That fits down on top of the on the injector somehow. So you have to wiggle it out. Now it could be a little bit more difficult depending on where the lobe of the cam is. As you can see how this lobe is sticking forward. If you have a lobe that is sticking forward, it may not want to come out quite as easy, but I believe you can still get it out. It just may take a little finagling. Okay, so to remove the injector itself, there, there, suction down in there pretty good. So I have done it a couple of different ways, but this seems to be the easiest. Now it does mar up the, the injector just a little bit. You could probably put a little protection on your jaws here, uh, maybe some tape or something like that because uh, just to kind of keep it from putting a little mark in the side. As you can see on this one, where, where the jaws touched, 
It's not a lot, but it does make a mark. But what I do is I grab a hold of it. Actually, go this way. Grab a hold of it. And you want to wiggle it back and forth. Or, or twist it in the... Oh, So there is like a nut, you can see a nut shape on there. So what I do is uh, rotate it. Let me get a good grip on it here. It's a little bit more difficult with just one hand. Wiggle it around a little bit and be pulling up at the same time. Can you see how they come out? So we'll do this one here. The first little twist is the hardest. And then once you twist it, it kind of gets a little oil on the, on the seals. You just want to make sure you have a really good grip on that, on that piece. And then rotate it. rotating and pulling up at the same time and now we're we're out so we have all four removed from the cylinders so the injector from the number one cylinder when I pulled it out it like gurgled and that is fuel that's not oil so fuel leaked out of this one so this could have been my problem with smell and it could be my problem with some uh, extra fuel consumption. So if the injector is clogged or, you know, not sealing off properly down there, let's take a little look at that here. Yeah, it could have a little carbon buildup in the tip, but um, it definitely leaked as soon as I dropped it down here it bloop, 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 and um and dripped actual fuel onto the onto the tray here so this is a good thing to get these other injectors back in there okay so we got all the injectors out <clears throat> i took uh paper towels and kind of stuffed down into the holes and just to clean those out we had just a little bit of oil from, uh, you can see here where it's just running down off of the cam. It, as I un, undid them, they were some that, uh, some of the oil that came out. Now, um, where the fuel comes in, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the picture. There's like a little indention here and a hole in the head. So the fuel comes in through those holes and then the injector has holes here where the fuel enters. So that's how the fuel gets into the engine and comes in through those little indentions there. Yeah, you can see the hole there. So that pushes the fuel in and then um, charges the, the injector there. So yeah, kind of cool. So now it is uh, time to put the injectors back in. And so what I'm gonna do is just lightly lube the, uh, the seals here. I mean, just enough to let them just slide a little bit and you do have to like tap them in. So you're gonna wanna hit right here on this corner 
or on this on this front corner here I can't really touch it here this front corner where these fat areas are you're going to want to tap it down on those to get it to seat completely and you'll be able to see it if you're looking uh, down at this area it should seat on that surface you shouldn't be able to see any of this so um, and I do believe that the uh, the clamps the hold down parts slide into this little keyway so they don't actually touch the surface of the um, of the head they clamp down here so when you're looking at this that little keyway there goes into there like that and that's what holds it down so there's actually a gap when that bolt goes in there's going to be a small gap here and that's going to be um, you can't really see that but when you uh, when you tighten it down this will not pull the injector down to seat it properly it may get close but it's not gonna it's not gonna pull it down and do it exactly correct so just uh, I'll show you what to do when I get them in and press down as much as I can with my hand so I've got my camera set up here I don't know if you can actually see it very well I think this should be good um, but I'm going to show you how to set these things in there just with your hand and then you're going to tap on them afterwards. So I've already set a couple here, but I'm pressing on the, uh, the large bulbous area and those areas where I talked about tapping on them and you just push down like as hard as you can and you hear it click. So. I believe they are all clipped in and they should be a little bit difficult to turn. Now another thing that they talk about <clears throat> is they need to be perfectly straight. Now I'm not sure how much that matters, but you can reference them on the side of the of the the upper supports here to make sure that they're they're perfectly straight okay so now I have all four of them seated now if you look right down here at that surface let me get a pointer right here where it touches the head you want to make sure that that is is seated as far as it will go now there is a little bit of a lip there so you see how it's tapered it's got that taper so there's going to be a small gap there but it shouldn't be a large gap and you shouldn't be able to turn the injector easily so it should it should stay pretty much in its place without moving really easy now this gap here this gap right here you want to make sure that that is the same from front to back you don't want it tilted like that See how it's open at the back and tight at the front? And you can actually see that the injector is not in there completely straight. So we wanna twist that around and get that as straight as possible. And so right there, to me, looks fairly even. Maybe just a teeny bit more. Yeah, so now that looks perfectly even. Now there are some measurements for this but um, I don't have the measuring tool. So I believe, 
I believe I have all of those perfectly straight. And if you just look down on top of them, it should almost be visible. Like this one looks like it's a little bit too much this way. So I'm gonna push it back just a teeny bit. Now that looks proper. So all those look good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on them just to make sure. I'm gonna put an extension right here on the back or right here on the front and just do a, a little tap just to make sure that they're in there. So now I'm gonna put the, uh, the hold down clamps on and I've got a set of new bolts here. These are stretch bolts and they are one time use. Um, you could probably use them again, but I would not do it if I could help it. If I just had to use them over, I would, but they're, uh, I think these were 30, 30 euro for four bolts. I know that sucks, but um, no, actually these bolts came with the seal kit. It's the other bolts. The bolts that hold the rocker arms down are also stretch bolts and need to be replaced. And I have heard of people breaking them when they torque, when they retorque them. So it's a good idea to, to just go ahead and replace them. Those were like 30 euro for the, for the set of eight. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get these. Um, first, I'm gonna screw them down in there. Um, and make sure there's no a bunch, not a bunch of oil in the holes and make sure that they thread down until they stop and then I'll pull them back out and, um, and then we'll put the clamps in. Okay, it is raining outside so I'm not sure how much, uh, how loud that is, but I've got the uh, injectors torqued down. Uh, these the hold down clamps are 12 Newton meters plus 270 degrees. So that's basically three quarters of a full turn. So I did three 90 degree turns. So starting here and ending here. And I did that three times, each one. And, um, and you can tell that the 12 Newton meters is not very tight at all. So once you do the 270 degrees, then it actually feels pretty tight. So that's good. Now I'm going to install the uh, rocker arms. So before I torque these things down, I screw the bolt down in there just hand tight. And as you can see here, a lot of oil came out of the hole. So that will stop. That will, you know, the fluid doesn't compress. So it has to be squeezed out. Now, I'm not sure if it would squeeze out during the tightening down process, but uh, I would rather it not be in there before I start. So what I'm doing is I'm taking those bolts, threading them down in there as far as I can, and then that's squeezing the oil out, and then I just wipe all that stuff dry. You can see here, these little holes are the, that's the oil journals. That's where the oil actually enters into this uh, rail and then that rail lubricates the rocker arm. So I threaded the bolts down into the head as far as I could get them to go. And you can see here that the first uh, uh, bulging section of the bolt and part of that sleeve is visible after it's tight. And so when I threaded it down into the head, I made sure that it threaded all the way past that second um, bulbous area in the bolt. So that way I know that it will thread all the way down into the head <clears throat> and oil at the bottom of that hole will not affect the torque spec. Now, I don't think it really matters. I just, you know, kind of double checking because as I threaded it down in there, oil just bubbles out. So I think they have built enough, um, enough room in there for the oil just to kind of squeeze out, but you do, do not want the oil to be creating your torque spec for you. So I just I threaded it in all the way past that second bulbous area and 
So now I know that it won't. This, that second bulbous area is actually inside that, um, inside the, uh, the rocker arm carrier. So now it's time to put the rocker arms back on. Okay, so I have torqued down all the rocker arm bolts. Now before you tighten those down and torque them, you want to loosen your nuts and screws for your for your injectors just to take the pressure off of them. Now what I did is I backed the nut off enough to where I could loosen the the bolt <clears throat> and then uh, torque the bolts at the top down which are 20 foot pounds or 20 Newton meters um, plus 90 degrees so I've um, I've done that 20 Newton meters I started with the center bolt well I, I get most of them you know close to 20 and then I torque them all to 20 and then at night when I do 90 degrees I started with the center bolt, go to the outside, go to the outside, come back to the center. Because this, you know, one bolt holding it down is, is pushing down both to an extent. So, um, middle, outer, outer, middle. And so I did that, and now I have tightened these back up to where the nut is almost touching. And so now we can adjust the valve lash. Okay, adjusting the valve lash is uh, you want to bring this rocker arm to its full compression and then tighten it. Um, tighten it till it stops and then you're gonna back it off and then tighten the nut. Okay, so I have the valves uh, adjusted. So when I started adjusting, it appeared that the firing order is um, two, one, three, four. That's how I would, that's how I adjusted them. So as I'm turning the crank, number two was the first one to compress. So that was the first one I adjusted. Then it went to one, then three, then four. So one, three, four, two is the firing order, I guess. One, three, one, three, four, two, one. Yeah. So that, that's your firing order. Um, so you tighten these down till they stop. No, you don't torque them at all, just till they give you resistance. And then you back off 180 degrees and then you tighten your nut down to secure it. Um, a lot of these guys are using dial indicators. I do not have a dial indicator, so I just did it by visual. There is a spot in the cam where it is holding the compression on that spring, and so you can rotate the crank, you know, at least a few degrees, I'd say five, ten degrees, and there's no change in the rocker arm. So when you see that the rocker arm has bottomed, but the crank is still spinning, then there's your bottom. I think that's that's good enough. I believe that the oil is actually creating a little bit of a damper there. Um, and so when you get this thing to, to bottom, when it's, when it's at its full compression and you tighten this bolt up, when you get resistance, I think that's where the bottom is for this spring. It can't go any further. And that's why when you back it off 180 degrees, it's leaving you just a little bit of cushion in compression here. And you're also going to get oil in the top of your, uh, like an oil bearing, I guess, is what, what it would be considered. You've got a little bit of cushion of oil inside, the, inside here, and you've got a little cushion of oil in the ball that touches this. Um, this is what I'm talking about here. This, this little doohickey here is sitting. See how it's got like a little bit of compression to it? So you're tightening that bolt down until it, until it compresses this thing all the way down. 
and then when you back it off, it gives you that little bit of spring there to allow for some oil to be in there and not wear everything out. So I'm, I don't think it's like super critical that, you're, that you need to use a dial indicator. I mean, if I had one, I probably would have used it, but um, I just had to make do with what I, what I have. So I believe that's gonna be good enough. So now uh, I have everything assembled. Now, one thing that make sure you don't forget is to plug these injectors back in. I had not done that and um, I realized that they were loose. So make sure you get those plugged back in once you get your injectors back in because it would suck to put this uh, valve cover back on and then the injectors not be plugged in. So I am ready to put my valve cover back on. I have taken a rag and just wiped down all the surfaces where the valve cover goes. And I'm gonna wipe down my gasket on my, on my valve cover and go ahead and stick this thing back on and uh, crank it up and see how she runs. All right, we are all back together. Um, put the uh, cover on for the timing belt. Uh, make sure your clips are nice and tight. Bolt here is bolted down. And um, I think everything else is good. All your, all your uh, valve cover bolts are tight. Make sure your clips are in, in place. I think mine is broken here, but it's clipped in. Vacuum hose or the uh, pressure vent vacuum hose. And uh, I believe we are ready to crank it up. All right, we are back up and running. Now it did take a few minutes or a few moments to get it to actually crank. So uh, you have to fill the full, you have to fill the injectors back up and, um, and then build enough pressure so that it'll actually fire. So I think I probably turned it over uh, three or four times. I think on the fourth time it actually started to crank, but I, you know, I'd crank it over for like five seconds, turn it off, turn it back on. Uh, crank it for five seconds and I did that I think four times before it actually wanted to crank and then on the fifth time it cranked and ran so just know that it's going to take a minute to fill your injectors back up and build all the pressure but everything worked out good everything's running well and uh, hopefully this solves all my problems and I get a good fuel mileage from now on Thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, comments, um, just leave them down there and I'll answer them as quickly as I can.